Hello everyone and welcome back to Jacket Educational Channel. So this video is all about the rapid revision for the UGC NET Environmental Science Entrance Examination and this video I have given the name as the 5 star concepts. So why 5 star concepts? Because in this video we are going to know 5 star concepts that means 5 very frequently asked and important concepts which are repeatedly coming in the UGC NET Environmental Science paper. So here we are also going to know some of the important numerical part, very very chocolate numerical, very easy to understand. So get ready with your notes so that you can write down all these things. So without much delay, let's get started. So before starting today's video, I would like to remind you that there are several videos in which we have done the rapid revision, mega revision, in which we have discussed several frequent asked questions, very very important for the UGC NET environmental science paper. So these things you should go through before going for the exam because these are very very important and will definitely help you in the examination. So the link I will provide in the i button, the playlist you should go through that and then you will be very very confident after going through all these videos. So first thing which we will know today is the first star concept that is stability condition that is atmospheric specific stability condition. This can come in any way. So first thing you should note down here it is absolute stability actually absolute stability. In this case what happens is dry adiabatic lapse rate is highest and it is followed by the saturated adiabatic lapse rate and least is the environmental lapse rate. So this is the condition for the absolute stability. Coming to the next thing that is absolute instability. Instability mein kya hota hai? Dry adiabatic lapse rate it will be coming in between environmental lapse rate and saturated adiabatic lapse rate. So question can ask like this. So this notation will be given and you will have to answer whether it is absolute instability or absolute stability. Similarly conditional stability condition when it takes place no need to know what is dry adiabatic lapse rate, environmental lapse rate just you should know these things just learn these things so that you can be able to answer when the question come from here. So here in this condition environmental lapse rate will be in the mid portion that is in between dry adiabatic lapse rate and saturated adiabatic lapse rate. So here least will be saturated adiabatic lapse rate in this condition it will be called as conditional stability condition. Next is weight neutral condition here the question was asked two years before and the notation used is when the dry adiabatic lapse rate is greater than the saturated adiabatic lapse rate but the saturated adiabatic lapse rate will be equal to the environmental lapse rate. So this is the peculiar thing about the wet neutral condition when SALR is equal to ELR and DALR is greater than SALR. Coming to the dry neutral condition in which dry adiabatic lapse rate will be equal to environmental lapse rate and environmental lapse rate will be greater than the saturated adiabatic lapse rate. And finally extreme stability condition so don't get confused between absolute stability and extreme stability. So extreme stability means here environmental lapse rate will be negative that means it will give the condition for temperature inversion specific condition in the atmosphere temperature inversion in which when we move up the temperature increases. So that case is when the environmental lapse rate is in negative extreme stability condition and absolute stability means dry adiabatic lapse rate will be highest followed by saturated and environmental lapse rate. So this thing this table you should make it is very very important one of the five star concept coming frequently like the examination. Next I have taken from the magnitude scale that is of earthquake magnitude scale the question was asked in the last examination. So here you should note down that when a earthquake magnitude scale is reaching 8 that is the measurement is showing 8 or greater than 8 it will be called as great. So it was asking what will be the condition when the condition is 8 or more or 7 or more it was asking I am not able to recall. So if it is more than 8 or 8 it will be called as the great earthquake that can totally destroy communities near its epicenter point. If it is in between 7 to 8 it will be called as major then 6 to 7 is strong moderate earthquake when will call when it will be in between 5 to 6 in the earthquake magnitude scale and next is light when it will be light earthquake when it will be in between 4 to 5 the minor earthquake when it will be the scale will be showing in between 3 to 4 magnitude so it will be called as the minor earthquake. 
so 2.5 or less it will be not failed but can be recorded by the seismograph so seismograph will record all this thing you should note down 8 or more than 8 it will be great 7 to 8 major 6 to 7 strong 5 to 6 moderate 4 to 5 light 3 to 4 minor and 2.5 or less it will not be felt by us but it can be also recorded in the seismograph which is measuring the earth's magnitude scale so this was simple thing but it came in the exam that's why i have included frequently asked questions very very important you should note down this thing let's move to the next thing so guys before going ahead let me remind about the four mock test series for the UGC net environmental science 2022 examination which will consist of 400 questions and give you a solid revision for the examination you just need to follow two steps First, you have to pay a nominal amount of Rs. 99 through Google Pay or Phone Pay to this number 88950035690. Then send me the screenshot of this payment and I will provide you the links which you can attempt at your any convenient time. Next thing guys is a very very chocolate numerical as I said the question first we will read how the question comes. The question comes the molar conductivity of a 1.5 molar solution of an electrolyte is found to be 138.9 cmn centimeter square mole inverse the question asks calculate the conductivity of this solution so for this you have to know only one formula that is molar conductivity which is given by lambda m is equal to k into 1000 by c where k is equal to conductivity and c is the concentration so here what is given what is given is concentration is given molar conductivity is given we have to find the small k that is conductivity so conductivity will keep it in the left hand side and rest all the values will put and will get the answer so what will be here 138.9 it is the molar conductivity that is here it is given 138.9 we will multiply with 1.5 that is 1.5 mole per liter that is the what that is the concentration divided by 1000 centimeter cube per liter because here 1000 we have to do and here it will be centimeter cube per liter now the solving after this thing you will be getting the value as 0 0.208 semen centimeter inverse or semen per centimeter so this is the unit but you should know what is the SI unit of conductivity SI unit of conductivity is Siemens per meter and here it was given in centimeter square that's why centimeter cube centimeter square it will cut and it will be only centimeter inverse you should see this thing here it will be in the denominator centimeter one centimeter will be left so after solving this you will get the value as 0 0.208 semen per centimeter in this way we can calculate the conductivity of the solution when the molar conductivity is given and what it is given and the concentration is given simply we have to use this formula to find the concentration or conductivity or molar conductivity if any of the two is given so one we can find out using the this formula i hope you have noted down let's move to the next concept next thing is find out another numerical so here it is telling find out whether the following reaction is spontaneous or not at 127 degree centigrade and what is the reaction reaction is here nitrogen gas when reacts with hydrogen gas gives ammonia and delta h that is the enthalpy change is given as 92.22 kilojoule per mole and delta s change in entropy is given as minus 198.75 joule per kelvin mole so what we have to do we have to use a burmaster formula that we all know delta g is equal to delta h minus t del s so here here what we have we have delta h we have delta s and we have to find the delta g so what we will take as t t is already given t is given as 127 degree centigrade so we have to take in the degree kelvin so what we have to do we have to add 273 that means 273 plus 127 that is 400 kelvin so we have t we have delta s we have delta h we have to find delta g very simple put the value and get the solution so here what we will do delta g is equal to 92.22 kilojoule per mole minus that means delta h minus t t is 400 kelvin we have calculated from 127 degree centigrade plus 273 to make it as kelvin multiplied by delta s so i'll clear this multiply by delta s that means you should look this formula we are using here delta s means how much delta s is given as minus 198.75 so we will multiply 400 by minus 198.75 
so after calculating this we will get the value as 171.72 kilojoule per mole so this value is giving the delta g delta g means gives free energy change but it is asking whether the reaction is spontaneous or not how we will know if delta g is positive so here we have got the value as positive then the reaction is non spontaneous so this concept you should note down if delta g you have found it is as positive it is non spontaneous if it will come in negative value it will be spontaneous so here in this case it is in positive so it is a non spontaneous reaction so it is not a spontaneous reaction so this reaction will be non spontaneous because first we have to find the delta g then we have to check the value that is whether it is positive or negative then we will decide whether it is non spontaneous if it is positive spontaneous if it is negative so i hope you are able to understand kindly note down this let's move to the next concept next again a very chocolate numerical don't worry numericals are very simple just remember the simple formula question let us read a thermal power station has a heat rate of 24 mega joule per kilowatt hour question is asking what is its thermal efficiency very very frequent last question please note down the concept and how to solve so the explanation is given here heat rate what is heat rate heat rate is defined as the ratio of thermal energy into the electrical energy out So after that we will know what is meant by one kilowatt hour. So one kilo means one thousand. So one thousand watt into hour. Hour means we have to convert it into seconds. So three thousand six hundred seconds. So one thousand into three thousand six hundred will give us the value as three point six mega joule. So one kilowatt hour is equal to three point six mega joule. You should note down these things. But here in the question it is given as twenty four mega joule per kilowatt hour. That is the heat rate of the thermal power station. so hence 24 mega joule per kilowatt hour simply means that the power plant consumes 24 mega joule of thermal energy that is the input for producing 1 kilowatt hour or how much we have calculated that is equal to 3.6 mega joule of electrical energy as output and we know the ratio is the heat rate that means output by input is the efficiency for any object or any station we have to find out efficiency means output by input value multiplied by 100 we will get the efficiency so here output is how much 3.6 mega joule input is how much 24 mega joule so here 3.6 by 24 multiplied by 100 will give us the value as 15% so 15% is the thermal efficiency of this thermal power station we should know the basic thing that is 1 kilowatt hour is equal to 3.6 mega joule and hence it is consuming 24 mega joule that means 24 mega joule per kilowatt hour and producing 1 kilowatt hour so we have converted 1 kilowatt hour into mega joule so simply output by input multiplied by 100 gave us the efficiency that is 15% so that will be the answer for this question so i hope you have noted down this thing if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section so this was from this video so see you guys in our next video if you like this don't forget to like subscribe the channel to get all further updates see you guys in our next video till then keep smiling and believe in yourself